Welcome to the Jungets Games tutorial for Passing Through Petra. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules of the game as it's being played, and I will be showing an entire two-player game today. Now, before we move on, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos just like this one in the future, then please go to patreon.com slash Games. This video was actually voted on by some of the supporters of the channel over there, and there are many perks that you can gain when you support the channel, including access to my exclusive Opinions episodes, where I talk in depth about all of the games that I'm playing recently, and you'll also gain access to some videos early and advertisement free. The last thing I'd like to ask is if while you are watching this, any part of the game really jumps out to you, or maybe you see a turn where we should have done something differently, then please comment about it down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our two different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Thematically, this is set in Petra, and in particular, this is a key trading point between the East and the West. Now, each player is a powerful citizen who is trying to trade with the various people that are coming through in this caravan, and they are also trying to increase their reputation in the area. The way this game works is on a player's turn, they'll move their pawn one space on this grid, and the direction that they moved will dictate the action that they are going to perform for that turn. For the plaza and seek actions, players will take tokens from this caravan row and then place those down into their own market row. When they do that, they're actually going to slide the tokens in their market over, and any tokens that fall off the side of their market go up into the associated settlement above their board. Now, the reason we are doing this is because when we perform market actions, we can then have the settlement tokens up top trade with the specific market tokens on our board, and we have a multiplier, so we could have something like 2 times 3 or 6, and then we use that trade value to move on these progress tracks up here on the board. Now, the reason we're moving on these tracks is so that we can place influence cubes down onto specific spots on them, and each one of these tracks will give us a specific power that will help us out in getting more of our influence down onto the board. Now, the reason we are trying to put cubes out is because the game will end immediately once any player has placed all nine of their influence. So, this game is a race to get all of these cubes placed down. Now, the last action is Village, and this lets you remove these tokens from your board in order to gain access to Village cards, which can have immediate as well as ongoing effects for the rest of the game. Now, I will go into detail about how all of this stuff works while we are actually playing the game, and for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the purple player over here. We are also going to be the starting player, so we can now take the first turn of the game. As I mentioned before, the first thing that we have to do is move our pawn one space on this grid. The direction that we move will dictate the action that we perform, and you must move orthogonally, you cannot go diagonal. In this case, I think we want to head in this direction, and that lets us perform a seek action. In order to do this, let's focus out a little bit, and in particular look down here at this caravan row. As you can see, these tiles are between these plastic canyon walls here, and there are two sections to the caravan. The first section is this area where there are two walls, and this is called the Seek. And the other section is right over here with one wall, and that is called the Plaza. Now, when you perform a Plaza action, that lets you take tokens from here, but when you perform a Seek action, you can only take them from the Seek area of the caravan. Now, when you perform this action, you take exactly one tile from this area, and I think the tile that we want to take is going to be this one right over here. Whenever we take new trader tiles, we have to immediately add them to our market row, which is down here at the bottom of the board. During setup, we each randomly got six tiles for our market row, and then four tiles got placed up here in the settlement, and you'll note that no players have more than two of a tile color in the top or down in the bottom. We have two blue and then one of the other colors. So we can slide this, and when we do that, that's going to knock an equal number of tiles off of the right side. Now, every tile that was pushed off the market row will then be placed up here in the associated color settlement area. Thematically, these are traders who are settling in our spot for the meantime, and eventually they are going to trade with other traders down here on the market row, and I'll explain how that works later on when we perform a market action. Now, as you can see, there are five different colored traders, and these are associated with different regions. The teal traders are local traders, and the light blue are Romans. The orange are Egyptians, the purple are Indian, and the red are Chinese traders. Now, on our turn, we added an Indian trader down here to our market row, and I'll explain why we did that later on when we perform our first market action of the game. 
All right, we finished our main action, and at this point, we can complete as many influence cards as we want. Each player starts with one of these, and we keep them hidden from our opponents, but I'm leaving this one face up in front of us for the time being, because obviously we are playing as purple. Now, we can't actually finish this right now, and in fact, I'll describe how we perform these influence cards and how we gain more of them later on in the tutorial. The final thing that we have to do on our turn is reset the caravan row, and we do that by sliding these forward so that all gaps are filled in. Now, after we do that, we don't necessarily add new tiles. In fact, we only add new tiles once we reveal this refill spot right over there. All right, our turn is done, which means our opponent can go, and they've decided to perform a plaza action. As I mentioned before, the caravan is split between the plaza and the seek, and when you perform a plaza action, you must take two tiles from the plaza area, which will always have six trader tiles in it. After considering their options, our opponent is going to take two of these local trader tiles. These will be added into their market row, and it's important to note that when you add multiple tiles, you can choose the order in which they go, unless, of course, they're the same tile, in which case that doesn't matter. So they can slide this down, and then this Egyptian trader will go to the Egyptian settlement, and then the Chinese trader will go to the Chinese settlement. At this point, our opponent is done with their turns. So we can slide these forward, and now we can perform our turn. At the moment, we're right up against the wall of this seek action, and that means we can't actually move any more this way. So the only action we can't do right now is the seek action, although technically, we can't perform a village action either, because we have to perform a market action first, and I'll explain why that is rather soon. So realistically, we can go to the plaza to pick up another couple trader tiles, or we could do a market action, and I think the market action is what we want to do. The way this works is we're going to take one of our worker tokens from over here, and we're going to place it onto one of our five settlements, as long as there is not a worker there already. Now, I think we want to go over here to the Chinese settlement, and then we can focus in over here and see that the Chinese settlement is trade partners with Indian traders on our market row. We can see over here the Indian settlements are partnered up with the local traders. And in fact, these partnerships are different with every player board. Our opponent's Chinese settlements have a trade partnership with Egyptian traders. So let's come back over here. Now that partnership for us between the Chinese settlements is with Indian traders. And now we count the number of traders up here in the settlement and the number of the matching partnership traders on the market row. And we multiply those numbers together. So that's going to be two times two, which is four. And that is going to be our trade value. Now, if we want to, we can spend as many camels as we want to add one to our trade value for each that we spend. So we have four trade value and we potentially could have five. And now what happens is we are going to move on the associated progress track. When we look out here at the board, there are five different progress track areas, and they are associated with the five different color traders that we can see in the game. We have the local traders over here, then we have Egyptian, Roman, Chinese, and Indian progress tracks. Now these four up here work the same way, whereas the local traders works slightly differently when we add to this track, and I'll explain how that works soon, because for now we obviously have four trade value, and it is with the Chinese settlement. So let's focus over here on the Chinese progress track. As you can see, there are seven different spots on it, and for every trade value, we are going to move our progress token clockwise once. In this case, we have a trade value of four, so we can go one, two, three, four, and the first time during a market action we reach this spot, we will gain the indicated bonus. When we focus out, you can see the bonus is different for each one of these progress tracks, and up here for the Chinese progress track, we can construct one building onto our player board. Now, I'll describe how we build this onto our player board soon, but first I want to continue talking about this market action. Now, every time a player's piece reaches this spot with that arrow, we also flip it over to show this influence cube icon, and that means that this token is active. Now, whenever an active token reaches a spot on a track that has an empty influence spot, we can then deactivate the token to place a cube there. When we focus in, you can see each of these are influence cube spots, and many of them have a three or four in it, and those are only used when you have that player count. So obviously in a two-player game, we only have the spots that have no numbers on them. But if it was a three-player game, we could place influence cubes on the first two locations here, here, and then three locations over there. And then no matter what the player count, players can always put cubes over there. So we moved obviously just four times, but if we had moved six times, then we could have placed one influence cube right over there. And when you place the cube, you flip this over to deactivate it so that once it reaches this spot again, it'll reactivate. And then we can once again place another cube down once we reach another applicable spot. Of course, our opponent is probably also looking to do this. And as these cubes go down, that plugs these holes up and you have to move farther and farther to place more cubes down. 
Now, if you remember from earlier on this turn, I said the first time we reach this spot, we gain a bonus. But every time we reach this spot within a given market phase, we still flip over and activate this token. What that means is we will always gain at most one of the associated bonus, but you could potentially place multiple cubes down because the way the multiplier works oftentimes gets a trade value into the double digits. For example, if you had four of your uh, settlement tokens up at the top, and then you had three tokens down below, that would be three times four or 12, and you would go 12 times around this track. And if you had, say, 5 and 5, that would be 25 trade value, which would move you around this track three times and let you potentially place three or even more cubes, depending on how many camels you might want to spend to go even farther. Remember, every camel that you spend increases your trade value by one, which obviously lets you move one more space around that track. We currently have one camel, but I think let's go ahead and keep it. It doesn't make sense to spend it just to move over there for the moment. Now, the reason we're trying to make big combos to place these cubes out is because these cubes are how we win the game. The moment any player has placed all nine of their cubes either out onto these progress tracks or onto influence cards, which I will describe soon, that player immediately wins the game. They don't even need to finish their turn. So this game is a race to put nine influence cubes down. And again, a big way to do that is by moving around these tracks a whole bunch of times by making big combos of the appropriate colors. Now, before we move on, I did mention that the local trader track down here is slightly different. Whenever you do a market action with the local trader settlement, you then move along here clockwise according to your trade value. And every time you meet or pass one of these icons, you gain the associated benefit. Each camel spot is going to gain you one camel token, which you can use immediately to increase your trade value and go farther if you want, or you could save this for later to increase your trade value for those other tracks. Every time you reach one of these spots, that lets you take a new influence card. When you do that, you either grab an influence card from this face-up market, or you take the top card from this face-down stack. And every time you take one of these, you immediately refill that spot with another card. Now, once again, all players started with a random influence card, and I will continue to put off describing how these work for a little while longer, because there's a couple more rules I'd like to talk about before we get there. All right, let's focus over here, and the final thing that we have to do as part of the market action is take all of the settlement tiles of the associated spot where we put that worker, and we place those back into this bag, and we might pull them back out again later on when we refresh that caravan. Now, at this point, we obviously have no more settlement tiles, and we have a worker here, so the next time we perform a market action, we cannot place onto that spot until we have removed this worker, and I'll explain how we remove that worker using the village action later on in the tutorial. All right, that's finished our market action, although before we move on, we do need to construct this building. Remember, we gained this as a benefit for reaching a certain spot on that Chinese progress track, and every time we gain a building, we place it down into an empty building spot on our player board. As you can see, each of the five settlements has an empty building location associated with it, and I think we want to place this one right over here. Now, you can only have at most one building per spot in the game, so in the future, if we gain a new building, we'll have to put it into a different location. And the reason we want these buildings is because on your turn, whenever at least one of that specific color trader has a tile go into its settlement, you will then gain a camel. Now, I did say at most one, so if you have multiple traders of that color go into that settlement on the same turn, you still just get one camel. But obviously, by putting this here, we are incentivizing ourselves to take more Indian trader tiles from the caravan and place those into our market because obviously having them in our market means eventually they'll make it over here to the settlement and they'll get us camels and these will let us move farther on those progress tracks. We already have a couple of these Indian traders out here, so we know that's effectively two camels that we will gain once they make it all the way over there. And this first one should happen relatively soon once this falls off of that row. So that's how buildings work. And let's now talk about how the other four bonuses work as well. Down here, whenever you get to this spot on the Indian progress track, you will gain a golden trader tile. The way these work is you simply slide them into your market row like normal, and whenever you perform market actions, the golden trader tiles act as a wild color, and they can match up with any other type. So if we did a market action over there, we could see the Roman settlement wants to trade with the Egyptian traders down here, and that means we would actually add this one plus the golden one, and that would effectively be two. Now once this goes all the way to the other side and falls off the market row, you will then simply return it back to the board. So these are just a wild trader that you will try to use as many times as you can while they happen to be in your market row. The next bonus is right over here, and this is a market row extension. 
the way this works is you place it like that, and then you take a random tile out of the bag, and then for the rest of the game, your market row is longer, so that means you will potentially be able to get bigger combos because you have more tile opportunities to have these match up with those spots up there. Now, the rules say to place this over here on the left, but I like to put it on the right so that you can simply slide these over and it doesn't hit that player board. It's functionally the same, even though the rules technically say it's supposed to go on the left. The final bonus is up here and associated with Rome. Whenever you do this, you can gain a permanent settlement token. You can't have more than one of each type, and you place this on top of your player board, and at the end of a market action, you don't remove this because it is permanent. So you essentially add plus one to your settlement value for every market action for that type for the rest of the game. Well, at this point, we've covered all of these bonuses, and we've also finished up talking about the market. Now, since our main action is done, we could play an influence card, and in fact, we can play as many of these as we want from our hand. At the start of the game, we gained this one, and this says that we can play it if we have an equal number of our influence cubes on the Indian progress track and the Roman progress track up there. In order to do this, we have to have at least one cube on each of these, and obviously we don't have any cubes down. Now, when you play one of these, you'll notice it has an influence cube spot, so you can take it off of your board and place it on that spot, placing this card face up in front of you. And remember, the game ends once any player has placed nine of their cubes, and again, those cubes either go here on the progress tracks or onto these influence cards. So it is good to pick these up and specifically try to get the ones that you already find yourself in so that you can place cubes onto them as fast as possible. Having these in our hand is also going to dictate our actions. Obviously, we want to have one cube over here and one over there at some point in order to complete this card. Of course, it doesn't have to be one and one. It just has to be equal. So if we get two over here, we need two over there to play this card. Obviously, we can't play that card, so that means our turn has come to an end. This means our opponent can now go and they've decided to perform a Seek action. This means they take one tile from the Seek area, and they are going to take this local trader. They'll slide that in right over there. This Indian trader will go up to the Indian settlement, and that's finished a pretty quick turn for them. This means it's time for us to go, and we can't mark it, and we also can't Seek because our token is in this corner. So our options are doing a village action or a plaza action, and I think we're going to go to the plaza for now. It's likely we'll go to the village somewhat soon as well, and I'm sure we'll see how that works soon. So let's perform that plaza action, and we have to take two out of these six tile options. In this case, I think let's take both of these Egyptian traders. And the reason for that is because we can see down here we have a couple of Roman traders, and relatively soon they'll be up here in the settlement, and our Roman settlements are partners with the Egyptian traders. So we can slide these in, and we're trying to build a nice combo here. These will both go up, and as you can see, once this reaches that spot up there, we would then have three of the Roman settlements, and then three of the Egyptians down here. Three times three is nine, and we could potentially make that even bigger if we're able to get more Egyptians down into our market row. Obviously, this isn't there just yet, but those are the plans that I'm working towards. Now, one thing I don't want to forget is the fact that this building activates because at least one of our Indian traders went up to that Indian settlement. So that is going to gain us one camel. Well, we can finish our turn by sliding these up, and now it's time for our opponent to go. I don't think we're too surprised to see them move it this way, so that means they will perform a market action. So they have to place a worker down onto an empty settlement spot, and they'll go right over here. Now their Egyptian settlements are partnered up with the local traders. That means they have two settlement power up here, and there are one, two, three, four, five local traders down here. So that's two times five, which is 10 trade power. They also have a couple of camels, so they could increase that to 12 if they wanted to. So, Teal can now look up here, and they are trading with the Egyptians, and again, they have 10 trade power. So that means they'll go around this 10 times, and they will start right over here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. This will flip over, and they will gain this bonus. After that, they will go 5, 6, and on this spot, there is an empty influence location, and their token is activated. So they can take any influence cube from their board and then place that right over there, and obviously in this two-player game, no one can place an influence cube onto either of these spots. Now they can flip this over to show that it's no longer active, and they've moved six out of their ten. That means they have four more to go, so they will go one, two, three, four. And again, they do have two camels, so they could spend these right now in order to go farther. In this case, they've decided not to, because obviously you can only gain this benefit of the market extension once per market action, and that means in the future, when they do another Egyptian market action, they will very easily gain another one of these market extensions. They figure it doesn't make sense to spend their camels right now. So they placed one cube, 
and they also gained this market extension. And remember, every time you gain one of these, you gain a random trader out of the bag. In this case, it looks like that is an Indian trader, and we can slide these down, and their market row is now seven tiles long instead of six. The final thing they have to do is toss these back into the bag, and that's finished a great turn for our opponent. Now it's time for us to go, and I think we should do the first village action of the game. The way this works is we can remove as many workers from our settlements as we want, but we must remove at least one. This is why earlier on I said you can't perform a village action until you perform your first market action, because if you don't have any workers up here, you are not allowed to perform a village action. Now, we do have one worker, so we can remove this. And again, you can remove as many as you want, and that clears those spots to then be used for market actions later on. After that, we gain exactly one village card from the village card row. As you can see, there are three of these out here, and there is a requirement down at the bottom. Now, these are the number of workers that we removed from our boards. If you only removed one, then this is the only card option you have. If you remove two, then you could take either of these. And if you remove three or more, you could take any of these three cards. Obviously, we only removed one, so we have to take this. And as you can see in the top right corner, there are different icons. This star is going to be an immediate use. We will perform this down at the bottom and then get rid of it. These arrows are one-time use, but you can choose when to use them. When you take these, you put them face up in front of you, and then at the applicable time, you discard them and then gain that benefit. Lastly, cards that have this circular icon like that are ongoing effects that you have for the rest of the game. Obviously, we have to take this card right here, and then after that, these will slide down and a new one will be placed into the market. And then, as I said, this has a star, which means it is an immediate activation, and then we get rid of the card. This is called a builder, and it simply lets us take one building tile. We already have a building tile, so we can take this and then place it onto a different spot. And considering we have so many Egyptian trader tiles on our market row, I think let's place this right over here so that when they come up here to the settlement, we'll get camels for those. Obviously, our opponent had a really good market, significantly better than ours, but we were trying to build a bit of a camel engine with these buildings to then use those camels to be flexible to get our influence cubes down as well. So we can now discard this, and honestly, the fact that this was at that one worker spot is the reason I wanted to do a village action right now. I did not want our opponent to get easy access to a building of their own. I would much rather have two and them have zero than we each have one. All right, we're done so our opponent can go, and it looks like they're going to do a village action as well. They will clear one worker off, which means they have to take this card, and then these will slide over. Next up, they can place this in front of them, because this arrow means they will hold onto it face up until they discard it at the right time to gain that benefit. Now, this master trader shows the Indian trader icon, and the way this works is you can discard it when you perform a market action, and then all of your Indian settlements up here can trade with any one color down here. It does not have to be their indicated partnership, or you could discard this when doing a market action to have any one settlement type trade with your Indian traders down here on your market instead of their associated type. So this lets them be really flexible with those Indian trader icons. And considering they have three up here right now, they could potentially use this to have them trade with these locals. And that would be a really scary combo. And I think they're probably going to do it. So I imagine we'll see that happen soon. Well, they're done, so now we can go, and I think let's do a plaza action. I'd love to take two Egyptian traders, but there's only one of them in the plaza, so let's definitely choose that one. And then I think let's also take a Chinese trader. We can add those to our market row, and I think we want to put the Egyptian in first. And the reason we are doing this is because we are looking ahead. Obviously, this is going to go here, and that will go there. And we can tell that eventually all of these Egyptian traders will go to the settlement. Now, our Egyptian settlements have a trade partnership with the Chinese traders. So at this point, we want to probably try to get a bunch of Chinese traders over here so that when these are up there, we can have a really big combo between those two. Now, for the short term, I think we'll mark it with the Romans first. And we do have to consider that we will have three of these Indian settlements relatively soon, and they trade with the local traders. So at this point, I think we are prioritizing trying to gain more local and Chinese traders down onto our market row with our future actions. All right, we can finish our turn, and after sliding that up, we have revealed the refill icon. So we can shuffle this and refill the entire caravan. All right, it's time for our opponent to go, and they are going to do another market action. With this action, they're going to place right over here, and normally that would mean their Indian settlements would be trading with Roman traders down here, of which they have none, but they are going to use this master trader they just picked up on their previous turn. 
Now, again, that says that they can have the Indian settlements trade with any one partnership of their choice instead of the indicated one, or they can have any settlement trade with a Indian traders down here on the market. They're obviously going to have these not trade with the Romans and instead trade with the locals. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five local traders down here. So that is going to be three times five or 15 trade power. And they also have a couple of camels over here they could use if they want. They did activate the Indian settlement, so that means that this is the progress track they'll use, and they're going to move 15 times on it. So that's going to be one, two, three, four. They will also gain one of these golden trader tiles. Then they'll go five, six. That will let them put a cube down. Then seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14. At this point, they'll put another cube down onto the spot, flip this over, and then for 15, they'll go right there. They do have a couple of camels, but they're going to hold on to those for the moment. Next up, they can add this golden trader to their row. This will go up there, and then they can clear all of these out. All right, they're done, and this game is a race to place nine cubes, and our opponent has placed three so far, and we've placed none. So that is a little concerning, but let's go ahead and move forward. In this case, I think it's time for us to do a market action, and let's activate the Roman settlement. Their partnership is with the Egyptians, so that is going to be three times four, which is 12 trade power. Let's focus up here, and we will go one, two, three, four. That will get us one of these permanent settlements, which we'll take soon. Then we'll go five, six. That will let us put an influence cube down. Then we have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, at this point, we could spend both of our camels, and that would get this over here and then place another cube down. Uh, placing cubes is a good thing. But remember, we have this influence card that says we want to have an equal number of cubes on the Roman track as with the Indian track. And if we put two cubes down here, we will then need to have two cubes on the Indian track in order to match. And our opponent has already made that somewhat difficult. So I think let's hold off on spending these for that. I'd rather spend these over here to have these equalize to get another cube down. Of course, we are not putting a cube down over there, and this is a race. But I feel like we're still relatively early in the game, and planning towards trying to get this down is probably going to be slightly better for us in the long run. Obviously, we'll have to go back over here to actually finish that off at some point, but there's still quite a bit of game left for us to get to that later on. It's certainly possible that not doing this is a mistake, but this is what we're going to go with. Before we move on, we do gain one permanent settlement, and considering it looks like we're going to try to build to have a massive Egyptian market action at some point relatively soon, I think let's take a permanent Egyptian settlement. As you can see, we are setting ourselves up to have one, two, three, four, five, six of these tokens up here at the top. So we really want to try and gain access to the Chinese traders down here in order to get a whopping multiplier. All right, we can discard these back to the bag, and that's finished a pretty good turn for us. We still only have one cube down compared to our opponent's three, but I think our opponent is a little bit out of gas for the moment, and we'll see what they do on their turn. They certainly aren't going to be performing a market action. After thinking it through, they're going to do a plaza action, and they will take this Egyptian trader as well as this Indian trader. They'll place both of those onto their market row, so these will slide. And that's finished their turn. This means we can go and we can perform any of the four action options. Out of all of these, I think Plaza is going to be excellent because we can take two of these Chinese traders. And as I mentioned before, this is kind of our main priority at the moment. So let's slide those right over here. And as you can see, when this Egyptian tile goes to that settlement, that building will get us a camel. And then when this Indian tile goes to that settlement, that building will get us a camel. Remember, each building can get you at most one camel per turn, but you can activate multiple buildings on a turn just like we did. All right, we are done. And our opponent has decided to do a Sikh action, and they will take this one Egyptian trader from the Sikh area. They'll place them right over there. And now it's time for us to go. I figure let's go ahead and do a seek action, and that will let us take one of these Chinese traders from the seek area. We'll take this one, and then we can place that right over here, sliding this up top. Now, technically, we don't want to do this market action until we get as many of these over as we can, but we've kind of worked ourselves into a corner in that action grid, so it's possible we might have to do this market action before it reaches its maximum power. We'll just have to see what our options are when our next turn comes around. All right, our opponent can go, and they will perform a plaza action, and they're simply going to take two of these Roman traders. So they can slide those down, and it looks like they got all of that massive amount of local traders out of their market row and up here into their settlement area. 
That's finished their turn, and it's time to once again refill the caravan. Well, it's time for us to go, and as much as I'd love to do a plaza action to take both of these Chinese traders, we are currently in this corner. We could do a market action or a village action, and if we did a village action, then on our next turn, we could do a seek action again. But realistically, I want to move our market row twice. We can't village, seek, and then village again, because at that point, we won't have any tokens left. So at a certain moment, we have to just go for it and do a market action, even if we're leaving a bit of the multiplier on the table. Now, I think for this turn, we should stall out a little bit. Let's go ahead and do a village action. We'll remove one of these, which means we have to take this card right here. We can slide the rest down. And this card is interesting. It is a farmer, and it has an ongoing effect, so that means for the rest of the game, we'll gain the utility of this card. This says we may discard incomplete influence cards at any time for three camel tokens. That means we might just get rid of this instead of completing it for that cube. Three camel tokens could be the difference between placing another cube out over there, and that flexibility certainly could be good for us. It's still good to try and get that cube down, I think, but I'm glad to have this. I'm even more glad to be able to do a seek action to take one of these tokens on our next turn, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We are done, so that means our opponent can go and they are gonna to go to the market. We're not too surprised to see them activate their local settlement tiles. As you can see, they are partnered up with the Indian traders, and that is one, two, three, four, five, six times two plus one, because this golden trader counts as any color. So that is six times three, which is a trade value of 18. Because they're trading with the locals, they're gonna go on this track, and they'll move 18 times. Now, every time they cross one of these uh, icons, they get what it says, so they will go one, two, three, four, and that is going to get them one card, and we'll take care of that soon. Then five, six, seven, eight, nine, that is a second card. Then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 for another card, 15, 16, 17, 18. So they gained four camels and one, two, three influence cards. At this point, they now have six camels, and they could spend all of them to move farther. So if they wanted to take a fourth influence card, they could, and they've decided that it's worth it. They'll spend one camel to go onto that spot, and that means they went around this entire track just about, and they can pick up four influence cards. They can draw from here or there, and there are a couple of different types over here. We've already seen what this does, but that one is completable if you have a building on either of these spots and you have a permanent settlement on either of these. So you need one building and one settlement, and they need to be in those specific types. Currently, our opponent does not have any buildings or settlements, though. Uh, this type right over here simply says you have to have three influence cubes on that specific track. Uh, if this was the Indian progress track, they would definitely take that considering they already have two cubes there, but right now they have none on the Chinese track. Now, they've decided to take this. They have one cube on the Egyptian progress track and none on the Roman, so they figure they could try to make this happen by getting a cube onto that Roman track. Now, they get to draw three more cards, but before that, we'll draw another one. Oh, and this is another type. This one has you adding up the cubes on these colors, and if they match, you can complete this. So if the number of cubes on Rome plus Egypt equals the number of cubes on China and India, then that is how you complete this one. Huh. At the moment, they have one Egyptian and no Roman cubes, and they have two Indian and no Chinese cubes. So that's two and one. And remember, they are trying to get one Roman cube to complete this. And if they manage to do that, they would complete that influence card as well. So they are definitely going to take this, and that is certainly going to be their plan. Although technically, we're not supposed to see these cards anymore, but we did see them take them from this market. They have to take two more cards. This one is also associated with the buildings and the permanent settlements. And they've decided to just take the last two as random cards from the top of the deck. They now have five of these influence cards to work towards. And remember, you can complete as many of these on your turn as you want. And they only need to place six more cubes to win the game. Obviously, completing all of these would be a very hard thing to do, but it certainly gives them a lot of direction for how they're going to play out their next turns. So our opponent can finish this market action by putting all six of these back in the bag. And now it's our turn, and let's do a seek action, and then take this Chinese trader right here. We can place them in the market row, and I think we're probably going to have to do this market action next turn, which does pain me considering this Egyptian is over there, but I think that's going to be the situation we're in. I suppose technically on our next turn we could do a market action for either of these, but there are no applicable tiles down here, so that would effectively be a wasted action just to increase a multiplier, and I'm not sure if that's worth it. Well, it's time for our opponent to go, and they are going to do a plaza action, 
and take both of these Romans. They can add those to their row. And then, of course, when their Golden Trader falls off the row, it'll go back to the supply. That's finished their turn. And now, I think let's do a market action. Now, before we actually take this action, I did forget to gain one camel when we placed that Egyptian settlement up there, so we should have five. Now, I don't think it makes sense to try and waste a market action in order to get this one token back up there. Let's just go now, because this is still going to be a monster action. So, our Egyptians partnered with the Chinese, and we have one, two, three, four, five times one, two, three, four, five, and we have five camels. So, our trade power for the Egypt progress track is going to be 25, and we can make it 30 if we wanted to. So, it's time to spin around a lot. We'll try not to get dizzy. That's going to be one, two, three, four. We'll gain one of these, then five, six, seven, and that'll put one cube down. After that, we go uh, eight, nine, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, then 15 is going to put another cube, then 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, which will put another cube, and then 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Actually, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, 27, 26, 25. 25 is where we're at, and now we can spend camels if we want to. Uh, we are one, two, three, four, five spots away from putting another cube down. That would be four cubes placed with this one monster market action that we've been working towards for quite some time. Currently, we have five camels, so we could do that, and that would leave us with four cubes left. Remember, we could always get rid of this influence card to get three more camels if we need to later on. And you know, I think let's just go for it. Let's spend one, two, three, four, five more camels. So that was a monster turn, and that catapults us into the lead. We have placed five out of our nine cubes. Our opponent has three down, although they do ominously have five of these cards in front of them as well that we do have to keep in mind. It looks like they're starting to set up towards some sort of combo over here, so they are certainly not out of it. Well, we can finish our market action by removing all of these. Of course, that one is permanent, so it stays there. And now we can see that uh, with all of these Chinese traders going up here, we probably want to be on the lookout for more of the uh, Indian traders to try and do another one of those market actions. And of course, when the Indian traders go up here, we do gain more camels. Now, I suppose the last thing that happens is we did gain this market extension. So we can slide this down and gain a random tile out of the bag. And, oh, <laughs> nice! It's one Indian tile, just like I said we were hoping to get soon. All right, our turn is done, so that means our opponent can go. After considering their options, our opponent is going to do a village action. They're going to remove both of these, and that means they could take either of these cards. This laborer would let them immediately place a permanent settlement tile down, and the ambassador says they could take two trader tiles at random from the bag. They may place them immediately into their settlements. Between these options, they actually want this one, so they didn't need to get rid of both of those workers, but they figured they may as well clear them both. So, these can slide down, and then they can immediately take a permanent settlement tile. Looks like I accidentally put this into the wrong column there, and they are going to take one of the Indian settlement tiles. Okay, we can go, and I think let's actually village. We can clear this one token off, and that means we have to take this card. We just talked about it, though, and it could potentially be great for us. This says we immediately take two tiles out of the bag, and if we want to, we can place them up here into our settlements. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because if we find Egyptian tiles, we could potentially do another Egyptian market while we have all of these Chinese traders down in our market. Now, we might not find those tiles, but either way, I figure having more tiles up here is going to be good. And the two that we found... Oh, nice. We did find one Egyptian, and then we found one Roman tile as well. And I don't see a reason not to put these down. All right, we're done, and our opponent is now going to do a market action. They've decided to select this one, and their Chinese settlements are partnered up with the Egyptians. So this is not going to be a monster market action like we've seen so often recently. This is going to be two times two, which is four trade power, but they do have five camels at their disposal. So they'll go one, two, three, four. This is going to let them construct a building, and then they've decided to spend two camels to get them over here. They can flip this over, and that will put their fourth influence cube down, and of course they will spend two camels, which means they now have three remaining. Next up, they have to place these into the bag, and then they also get to place this building down, and they're going to put it right over here, which might seem a little strange considering they have just one of that color about to come up here, but the moment they do that, they are now going to play influence cards. 
Now, I did say cards as in plural because they can play both of these. This one says they need to have a building in the Indian area, and so does that one. And then both of them also say that you need to have a permanent settlement in the Indian area or a different option. So that means by putting these two things here, they've completed both of these, and they can place influence cubes on top of each. So that was not a massive multiplier turn, but they still managed to get three of their influence cubes down, and they've taken the lead because they only need three to win, and we still have four on our player board. That's finished their turn, and I think let's do a seek action, and I know we've been taking a lot of these Chinese traders recently, but I think let's do it one more time. The reason for that is because we can slide this over. Uh, this is going to go up there, and we now have three, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six down here. So on our next turn, we could do yet another Egyptian market because we cleared that off with the village action, and an 18 power action is still going to be great, even though we put so many cubes down over there already. Now we do gain a camel when we place that Egyptian into that settlement. And that's finished our turn. So now our opponent can go. And they've decided to also perform a seek action. And they will take this Roman right here. They'll place them into their market. And then when this Indian trader goes up to that settlement, the building will activate, getting them their fourth camel. That's finished their turn. And like I said before, I think let's mark it. Let's place this right over here, and the Egyptian settlements will trade with the Chinese traders on our market row. So that's going to be three times one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is a trade value of 18, and we do have one camel plus potentially three more because we could use this farmer to discard this for three. So let's focus over here, and I'll tell you right now, it's pretty uncommon to see this many cubes of one player color over here, but we've been able to really work this combo to try and essentially race the game out over here trading with the Egyptians. So we're going to move 18 times, that's going to be 1, 2, and we will gain a market extension, then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that will put a cube down, then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You know what? I think let's spend camels. Let's spend this one here, and then let's ditch this using our farmer. That's going to get us three more camels. So that is four camels, and this should be like that. And then let's go one, two, three. I guess let's spend three camels instead of four. So we have one left over. That's going to flip this over again, and it's just amazing how many cubes we have over here. In fact, at the moment, we have one cube left. If we're able to place that one before our opponent gets three down, then we will win the game. Now, again, <laughs> oftentimes I see players being a little bit more uh, diversified with these instead of going hard on one of these tracks like we have, but we were able to put together a nice combo using that village card to make it make sense to utilize this awesome multiplier multiple times in close succession. Well, that's finished our turn, so we can place these back into the bag. Although, actually, hold on, we did gain one market extension, so we can place that right over here and slide the rest of these down and get another random tile, and that one is going to be an Indian trader. Well, it's time for our opponent to go, and they will perform a plaza action, and with this, they will take these two Chinese traders. They can add those down over here, and that's finished a pretty quick turn for them. We can slide this up, and oh! We revealed the refill so we can see some more tiles. All right, it's our turn, and let's do a plaza action. And with it, let's take these two local traders. Remember, all we need is to place one more influence cube, so I figure taking these is good because mostly it slides these down to place those up there. But also, technically, we can see that our Indian settlements do have trade partnerships with the locals, so it's possible that might be enough to get us the victory on our next turn with a market action. We'll just have to see when we get there. We are done, so now our opponent can go, and they're going to do a market action. They'll select this spot, and their Indian settlements have a trade partnership with Rome, so that is 3 times 5, which is a trade value of 15, and they do have 4 camels. So they're going to move 15 times over here, and it looks like the calculation they had to try and play a couple of these at the same time by balancing their cubes out here is probably not going to come to pass as they just try to blitz uh, that combo to try and get their cubes down as fast as they can. So they'll move 15 times, and they'll start by going 1, 2, 3... That will get them one golden trader tile. Then four, five, six, seven, we'll put a cube down. After that, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 
And uh, when they get to this spot, technically, they drop off another cube. With their four camels, they could get over to here, but that's not enough for them to place another cube, which is a good thing, considering they now have only one cube left as well. Uh, now, this is going to slide over, and they can place that up there. And then these will go back to the bag, and this game is incredibly tight at this point. Uh, we each just have one influence cube, and I feel like it's possible both of us are one market action away from victory. Well, it's our turn, and we need to try and win on this turn, because I can look over here and see that our opponent can win on their next turn if we let them have a turn. They could do a market action over on this spot. Their multiplier would be just one up there, but they have this golden trader. So that would be one times three, which is three, plus four camels is seven. And that would be exactly what they need to go all the way around here and drop their last cube onto that spot. So we know our opponent can win on their next turn. So let's perform a market action and try to be the first one to place our final cube. So let's look over here. Now, if we went to that spot, we would have three times two, which would be six plus one is seven. If we went there, that would be two times two, which is four plus one, which is five. So we can look over here, and at the Indian progress track, we would have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spaces to place a cube down because our opponent has done so much over there. So 7 is not going to be enough. But if we look over here at the Chinese progress track, we just need to go 1, 2, 3 in order to unactivate this previously activated token. So let's perform our market action right here. Again, that is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. That lets us go 1, 2, 3, and place a cube down. And then the game immediately ends, even in the middle of our turn, because that was our final cube. So that means we just barely won. As you could see, our opponent was uh, in a situation to win on their turn as well. And despite having all of these influence cards, they were just one cube shy. Uh, because they went so heavy on this right over here, they weren't able to get to the balance situation, where again, they were hoping to be able to play a couple of these by balancing things out and putting one cube down over there. Perhaps it was a mistake for them to do that last sprint around here to put two cubes down. Maybe they should have waited to try and get three cubes down by going over there. Uh, it's entirely possible they actually lost the game by going short-sided by having a big combo, whereas a smaller combo could have actually ended up being worth more points. But either way, that is going to finish this full two-player game of Passing Through Petra, and I hope you enjoyed learning how to play the game and playing along with me. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.